Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings, 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 greetings. I welcome you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. We have every reason to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Greet yourself. Love yourself tonight. What a beautiful Friday as we are coming all in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. We have every reason tonight to rejoice and be glad in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell somebody this evening that we are ready to move mountains. We are ready to move stuff to go to the other side in the mighty name of Jesus. Before I just get into our text, let me just pray for you to be with you tonight in the presence of your own living rooms. It is a day that we have to go and visit some stuff tonight. You know, we are this time we are not even compromising our ground. We are not even giving any excuse to the enemy's camp. We are making sure that you are going to go to the other side in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me pray for you just as I welcome you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to give you thanks, oh my God, as we are coming into your presence, oh my Holy Spirit, move among us, this. move in our lives tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, from wherever they are participating from God, I thank you for everyone who's coming, and those who are coming later on this podcast, touch them, oh my God, heal them, Lord, oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, as you touch them, Lord, let them be elevated, oh my God, let this word reside into them, oh mighty God, to know that they are more than conquerors, Father, I thank you, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So tonight, uh, I'm feeling so blessed because God is about to do what he has always done. There are so many things that are happening every other day, every other night. We are experiencing miracles after miracles because the power of God is at work in this season. I thank God for every one of you who is right here. You are part and parcel of the revival. Please, it's a time for revival. We all have to be part of the revival. All you can do, if you are part of this podcast, just a share button is good enough. That means you are helping Pastor John to reach out to other friends or friends. So that's all we can do because this season is the best season we can ever have. And we touched so many lives. So tonight, let me just welcome you. So let us go quickly uh, into the word of God. As you see on my text, we, 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 are, we are tackling things. We are not here just to try and make another day, but we are tackling things. For those who have issues and who are saying enough is enough, there are things that we need to to understand you got to get somewhere say enough is enough but how 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 do you do it so tonight let's go and look into the word of god i've given my title the word versus the wind the word just say the word versus the wind hallelujah that's the title tonight the word versus the wind we want to see how we as christians the children of god how we overcome by the word that is in us because let me tell you, this is the only thing each one of us can. It doesn't take a pastor. It doesn't take a prophet. It doesn't take anybody. But when you have got the word, have you been given a word? If you've got the word, you've got the answer. I've got to tell somebody tonight, if you've got the word, if you pick up something tonight, I know you've got the answer to your family. You've got your answer to your marriage. You've got your answer to your finance. You've got the answer to your relationship. You've got the answer to your health when you've got the word. Tonight, let us go quickly into the word of God. I said, word versus the wind. One of these should win. Let's see what wins. Hallelujah. If you are versus something, so one got to win. One got to win. So one has to win. It's about fear. It's more like, do you have fear or do you have faith? So one has to, up, to be outstanding. Let's see what the word of God says here. We are going to look. From the book of Matthew, chapter number 14, verse number 22, as we read up to 33, let's all read, please, it's very good to actually open your Bibles because you don't want to read from mine, maybe I might lead you the other way, but I want you to know right now that it is important to read your Bible. Let's read all together. And immediately, verse number 22, immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd after he had dismissed them he went up on the mount on the mountain side by himself to pray later that night he was there alone verse 24 and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it 
Can you just say the wind? Can you just say the wind is against it? The wind, the wind. Let us continue to go. Let us continue. The wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. That is walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out for fear. So fear always grip you. Let alone the boat you're walking in is troubled. And the next thing, what you see ahead of you is a ghost. So what hits you? You know one thing? Fear. Bam! Come in. Let us go and see what happened next. It ghost. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Let, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Peter got down out of the boat, walked into the water, and came towards Jesus. But he saw, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died. When he climbed, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Thank you, God, for the reading of the word tonight. We want to see what God, what the word can do against the wind. Each one of us, there are so many winds, so many winds. There are so many winds. Uh, let us be very realistic to walk to life because so many of us have got winds to fight. We are in our boat of our own life, but winds to fight. You are fighting financial wind. Hallelujah. Health winds. Hallelujah. Marriage winds. Relationship winds. Children winds. Hallelujah. It can be anything that you are fighting. Somewhere, somehow, mentally winds. Hallelujah. There's so much breakdown going on. Some winds. But one thing that I love tonight about the word of God, there's something profound from the word of God that I find here. Because when you are a child of God, as you are already here on this podcast, tonight I've come to tell somebody, I said you've got the word from the Lord. If the Lord has said so let me tell you hold on to the word of the lord because if the lord has said so you will come out on the other side but let us go quickly and understand the whole text the context of this text because we find out there are some nitty gritties and we want all of us to try and salvage out of this because jesus what he did he told them to go on the other side that means what was given on the word on the disciples was the word if he had told you that you're going to be married, that's one thing for sure it's going to come to happen. If your business is coming to, to flourish, he said it. It's not the wind that has to stop your business or your marriage. It is not going to take your children wherever. It's not the wind. As long as you keep the word. So these guys... They happen just to have a moment of hearing the word. That's why it's a danger to only to be a follower. I don't want to go to the other side to tell you that, you know, the disciples were not really, well, they were not really like, can I say, I don't want to start, to start a new subject. Let me just concentrate. Because these guys have been recruited. They had not received Jesus as Christ as personal Savior. They were only recruited to become to be fishers. But they didn't have much relationship with God. They were not because Jesus had already not died for people. For the washing of the blood of Jesus. So he, they were still with Jesus. So they were just like followers. Most of us will follow anybody. And when we follow anybody, do you know one thing? What do you do? Whether you're on Facebook, you can follow anybody. But it doesn't make you a member. It doesn't make you a participant. Or anything that affiliates you with any organization. But here we are coming. Jesus meets. The, tells these guys, go on the boat. That means it's, a, it's telling them an instruction. Go on the boat. That's the word of the Lord. The word told them to go. With the, who is the word? It's Jesus. So if Jesus says yes, no one says no. So now, what happens between the journey? But one thing I'm going to bring to you. When they got into the boat, do you think Jesus did know that there was going to be a storm? When he is God, he knows the weather. He created the sea. He created the ocean. So nothing was new to Jesus for them to say go. He said go because what was going here was to test them to see if they can still, still stand on their faith. 
This is only immediate when Jesus had dismissed the, the whole crowd that he was preaching on the other side. He had seen miracles already, but two minutes they had already forgotten. This is what life can be. We can forget what we were told during the course of time. But we find here tonight, I want to say tonight, please hold on to your word. If you've got a word that will prophesy to your life, please, I said, hold on to the word tonight. Hold on to your word. Your word is only going to be your bridge to go to the other side. Let us see what happened. These guys, Jesus said he went up to the mountain. As usual, it was his routine to pray. So he said, guys, I know you can't stand what I want to do here, but you say they're in the same place. But sail through as they sail. I love God because God can take us to a place of our test. Have you ever been tested with life? That the Lord will let you go in the midst. You know, the storm did not start in the beginning of the journey. They could have sailed back. He said when they were a distance in the middle of the sea, that's when trouble came. Have you ever felt like you've gone too far? That if you look back, it's like it's a non-starter. You're looking forward, you don't see where you are going. And you're like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Why didn't it? I know. Why did I know as soon as I got in the boat? Why did I look in the weather report? Have you ever noticed that life can put you to a place? Why, Lord, have you taken us this far to come and dump me? I think these disciples say the same thing. Why Jesus had not told us that this weather report is not going to be good? And did you know one thing? One thing I love about this, because we know Peter is one of the guys who actually understood because he worked in the water. I don't know how he lost it to have found out with the weather because brother Peter was working in the waters all his life. So he would have known that this is not a true, good time to be on the sea. It was not a good time. They know what time to go in the sea. And when the tides are low, that's when you can go in the waters. But one thing we find tonight, the Lord of weather. The Lord of the wind comes into the midst. Can we just call him the Lord of the wind? Hallelujah. He's the Lord of the wind. He's the Lord of all the weather. He's the Lord of your life. When he says so, there's no weather that you cannot stand tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. I know tonight we are going to see stuff. So we see these guys now already. Already they find themselves the weather is not favorable. But one thing the Bible explains, so Matthew gives a very good report. He said the boat was in the midst that even it was too far to look back and too far to go to the shore. Do you know, have you ever felt cornered? Have you ever felt cornered? Felt cornered in life? Financially, meritally, materially, everything. You look like Wow. You look aside, you're like, wow. You look here, and you're like, wow. And where I'm at, I can't look back. When you look back, nothing. Still, like, looking forward, you can't see the horizons. You can't see in light. Life can lead us to some place. But what are we still holding on? Do you still have the word that was spoken by mama? Do you still have the word that was spoken by the Lord? Which word are you? Which? What strikes? So these guys got struck by fear in the middle of this thing now but one thing that i find from this text which makes it say it right now because if the lord has spoken the word you go to the book of psalm he said the lord you know what he's he settles whatever has been settled in heaven he has read what was spoken is settled in heaven you know what psalms 119 verse number 87 when it is settled in heaven it is done and dusted if it was spoken i don't care how many warlocks can come into your life let me tell you you leave what the lord has said to you only when you don't get afraid and have fear to take over because jesus went to the mountain why did he go to the mountain? He was interceding for them. Because when God is actually in the mountain, what we see, because what he has said, he, what, he looks after his word. God looks after his word. He is always after his word. He watches over his word. Say to yourself, God is watching over his word. Can you write that on your platform? Say, God is watching over my life. God is watching over the word upon my life. Just say it, declare it tonight. It is your night, declare. He said, the Lord is watching over my life. It's not the warlocks. It's not mama. It's not grandma. It's not generational cases. I said, the word that was spoken on me is watching over me. Tonight, I'm talking to some people. 
winds are coming from different angles winds 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 you know you know it's good when you are on the land when you are inland but it's another thing when you are right in the middle of the sea this is not only a little lake this is a sea you know when the waters are really dark thick and solid and you can smell the waters you can smell that I am sinking. I'm becoming the food for the sharks, the food for the whales. I'm coming the food of this. I, you know that my life is finished. You can have the winds that tell you that you are finished. But what is it that you're still standing when the word was spoken to you? One thing when you know the word that was spoken to you, one thing you do is say, you go back because he honors his word above his name. That's what he does. He said he honors, he watch over his word. That's why he went to pray in the mountain because he had them in mind that I spoke a word to the people I left in the sea. No wonder why. But what Jesus did, I love it. Let me tell you. Because sometimes, have you ever felt that in life sometimes we feel like we're too smart? Have you ever felt so smart with life? But God says, no, I love you too much to let you go that way or to do this dumb stuff. What I'm going to do with you, I'm going to make sure I'll let you go in the middle of nowhere where you have no option B. Because we are in a world today which if one of us when we are doing things, eh, at least I've got an option. But Jesus said, uh -uh, uh -uh, I can't go with these guys, with these two-minded sets of people. He said, I'll let you sail until you are in the middle, guys. Middle of the sea. When the seas get deadly, then he says, I got you. Peter is looking around. He's a man who knew about the waters. He couldn't find not any other way to do himself out of that. As much as he was too smart, he's a boy who tried to be very smart to himself. But let me tell you, he could not have no an option. He did not have no option. He had no option. You know what? He had. He left them to just. Do you think Jesus did not know? Do you know? Do you think God doesn't know what you're going through? Do you think God doesn't know what you're going through? I know I've got people here who got stuff to deal with. But I'm telling you tonight. I said God knows the storm you are in. I said, God knows the storm. God knew already that there was going to be a storm. But why are you afraid? Because he's the God of the storm. If he has spoken over your life, he will watch over your life. In the name of Jesus, am I talking to somebody? Because that's why we find this story is just it. The end of it is so beautiful. Because he's the God who watches over his word. What did he do? He comes back just as he gets done. They didn't sink. No, they didn't sink, but it was being just torn and toasted. Life can tell you, some of you, you are in a situation, you're like, you're looking, ah, how did I get out? Ah, how did I get out? Ah, how did I, you, but it's, you're still going. It's 2021, you thought you were dead in 2015, but now you're seeing six years later, you are still standing. Seven years later, you are still standing. You're like, ah, I'm still crawling. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, ah, ah, these guys, eventually Jesus appeared because he has spoken the word. The word is with you in the storm. It's not a going around the storm. It's going through the storm for the word of God to be real in you. Because that's why he said it's a tried and tested word. It's a tried and tested way. Let me tell you guys, we can't see the word, the power of God if we can't go through, allow the storm to come. Because he's the one who can take you through the storm because he has spoken the word. He spoke and said, go to the other side. That was good enough to know the one who said, go, will always be with us. But along the line, what is coming between you and your life? Along the line, let us see. Because right now, the Lord left them because their option that they used to have he said, I'm going to cut these options. I'm going to let them go in the middle and let them be toasted and twisted. And honestly, he allowed it. Just say, Lord, yes, thank you. You allowed me to be here. Can you just say to yourself, thank you for allowing you to be here? Because I know you are in it. I to, I, please, somebody, you've got to tell yourself and say, I thank God I'm where I am. Because God, your word is going to see me through. Why am I, my testimony is going to come from? It's going to come from the word of God. Because he's the God who honors his word above his name. Hallelujah. What he has spoken will always come to pass. Don't look back. Don't give up. He knows your position. He knows your position. Nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing. If he has spoken, if you are a child of God, unless 
unless you have not repented, unless you have not received Christ as your personal Savior. But if I'm talking to some people here who have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you said, I, you are my daughter, I'm telling you, he has got you in the palm of his hand. If he said, you are my son, I'm telling you, he said, I have you in the palm of my hand. He's going to come to your rescue. This evening I'm coming to you. I said, he's coming to your rescue. Your body is not going to sink. Your life is not going to sink. It's going to happen tonight. I'm talking to some people who are in the middle of the boat about to sink. Yes, it doesn't look good. Yes, it doesn't smell good. Yes, the surrounding is not conducive for any other stuff. Yes, it doesn't really look good. Yes, I understand it's not really looking good. But let me tell you. You know, if the word was spoken, what has your pastor told you? What has your church told you? What has heaven said about your life? Which word are you following? Because if you are following Jesus, let me tell you, I don't care how many people have told you this, but if you are following the word of God, your boat will never sink. In the name of Jesus, tonight I'm talking just to probably to one person. It might not be good for you tonight, but it shall be good for somebody. I've come here for tonight in the mighty name of Jesus because I'm telling you, there is a God who is watching over his word. He told them a story. He said, guys, I'm going to the mountain doing some intercession. I'm telling you, he's interceding for you. Let us quickly go and see because we see now Peter, as he sees the storm, getting over brood after the fear is a man who tries to be a more pro you know proactive in everything ah oh, that's a ghost ah oh, the next thing are oh, jesus oh can you call me to come in but the next thing you are coming from the boat where you need rescuing and the next thing we are now on the sea starting to even to be afraid again to the man who told you come because every time you try and doubt the word of god you sink I've come to tell some people, I don't care what is happening in our personal life, but let me tell you, in the midst of the fire, that's why you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood in the midst of fire and say, you know what, Nebuchadnezzar, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what is going on here, if God is not going to come, but we're not going to bow down to pressure, because life is taking us through some pressure, where we don't know what to, to do, but they refuse to bow down, and guess what, the three Hebrews ended up having four people in one. And you wonder, where, who was the fourth one? Jesus was there. Let me tell you, your story is not new to God. I'm coming to somebody tonight, I said, your story is not new to God. Because these are guys who don't even, they are not inland, where you say at least they've got an option to jump off. These are the seas. Sharks are full of there. Wells, any kind of marine spirits are right there. But let me tell you, there's a God in heaven who is saying, I need you, my daughter. I need you, my son. I've got your back. I've got your back right now. I don't care what mama said. I don't care, but if you are still on my word, I've got your back. If you are all still on my word, I've got your back. Who's, I'm telling you, which word are you? Are the people who cast you? No, if you are on the word of God that says, I'm blessing you going in. I'm blessing you coming out. Just speak a blessing over like, don't say I am poor. Just say, to you, you know what? Go and read this. You know, Dotson 28. I am blessed going in. I am blessed coming out. I am healed. I am set free. Continue to speak it. And it will come to pass because he watches over his word. That's why I'm always, every time I preach, I don't leave. Numbers 23 verse 19. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither son of man that he should repent. He doesn't change position. Men can come into a life and change position. If women can come into our life and change position. Governments can talk to us and change position. But God, what he says is final. Hallelujah. No wonder why. It doesn't matter how the pot has been toasted, but the word still stands. I love it. Do you know when you know the God you know, you come to a time when I say, no, 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 no. I'm still here. Yes, I can see the waters want to seek me, but I'm still holding on the word. I'm still holding on the word. You remember even when, when, when Saul, Paul, in the book of Acts 27, we all know the story. When the, on the shipwreck, I love one thing on the shipwreck. Let me just paraphrase and give you some reference. Paul, because ah, this is so interesting, because it's all about boats. Paul gets a shipwreck, it got broken in the middle of the sea. But one word before it got broke, people were told the word by Paul and say, Guys, hold on to any piece of wood. That is the only word Paul tells somebody. Come on, come on, somebody. 
That was good enough. He said, none of us is going to perish. He declared it in the middle of the sea. Are you here tonight that you are not going to perish? Are you here tonight that you are not going to die as a mediocre? Are you here tonight because I am speaking the word upon your life today and say in the name of Jesus, you are not going to sink. Because the word is there to perform what God has called it to do. He said, my word will never go void. It will perform which concerns your life. Let me tell you, they all sailed holding a little wood. Imagine Paul, he demonstrated. He, you know, when he went up to the shore, I love it because in the school of thought, if you go and look in that, they went to this, you know, to this island of Malta. You know that Malta country, that European country, it was Malta. If you go and start Malta and find out what is Malta for, Hallelujah. What is Malta? What does the name Malta stands for? I'll give that one for a homework. If you've got it, please give us and put on the platform. Malta, Malta. I'm telling you, God is taking you to your Malta. Hallelujah. Because he said, you see, it doesn't matter you are holding on a, on a little wood. I don't care you are holding on your last stuff in your house. You've got only a little barrel of oil left right now. But I'm talking to somebody. I said, hold on to the Jehovah Jireh. Hold on to the Jehovah who provides. Hold on to Jehovah Rapha, the God who provides, who heals. Hold on to Jehovah Sikendi, the God, oh God, God Almighty. El Shaddai, the God of all powers. Let me tell you what has he spoken over you. What word can you remember tonight uh, that you can still hold on, woman of God? I don't care, men of God. It's really painful, the journey. It's painful. But here we go. We can't run away from the word of God. Let us see again. Let us see. Uh, just Let me just quickly go because I've got my stuff to cover here. We find from Romans... This is one thing, because if the God who honors his word, Romans chapter number 8, verse number 38 to 39, he said, for I am convinced. Can you write, I am convinced? This is Paul. I love Paul when he gets to the Roman. It's a place that was not easy to, to preach in the Roman territories. The Roman, uh, the dangerous people all over the world, they really demolished so many things. Dealing under the Roman empires was not easy, but Paul walked in there. That's where he was beaten 40 times minus one. Yeah, you know, how can you do such kind of myth, Paul? 39 minus one strokes. That means 39, 40, 40 minus one. But let us see here what does Paul say in the, in the situation like this, where your boat is sinking. Let us see how much love of God that he has for us, even when we are at our weakest. Let's see, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, please listen very careful, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, can you say nor any power, nor any demons, can you declare tonight, can you preach with me for one time, I need preachers here, I don't need people who participate and watch me, I said I need preachers, can you preach with me and say power, sir? no more demons, no more principality, I don't care, neither demons, neither death, let me tell you, let's go, and then, neither heights, neither deep, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me. Separate us from the love of God. Do you know God has got so much love for you that nothing. I love Paul. He said, I don't care what I go through. I've got too much love that nothing can separate me. When that death kill me, I don't care. I don't care. Kill me. You can kill me, but you can separate me from the love of God. We've got the love that is unprecedented. That while we are we're sinners, he still died for me. When, when I was doing some stupid things, he said he died. He said, come on, John, you are my son. I love you. I know you've been doing dumb stuff, but you're still special to me. So when I know that, then I come here, I can't be apologetic. Honestly, that love is too unprecedented that I cannot even ignore it. Loving a man like me, 
Hallelujah. Loving a woman like you, loving a man like you. Can you imagine put, putting us together in this platform? He knows. He said, what else shall separate us from this love? Let me tell you. And let me tell you that we find in Jesus Christ. That's why when he was on the mountain, he knew that now they are right in the middle. Let me go and approach my boys and reach out to my boys. Let me go and reach out. He came out from telling you. And he was showing his Godhood. He showed his Christhood. And he started walking on the water. He didn't come like flying and say avoiding water. He walked on something some people are afraid of. <laughs> this is one thing I love about God. What you are afraid of God is what he's walking upon. He's walking on what you are running away from. Oh, this is powerful. I'm preaching to myself today. I'm feeling it right now because I'm trying to run away from the things God is walking upon. So if I am of God, John chapter 1 verse number 12, to them that have received Christ, he called them children. So if I'm a child of God, if I'm in Christ Jesus, that means I can walk where he walked. I can move what he moved. Hallelujah. I eat what he eat. So what is it that is in you? Is it fear or faith? Because some of you right now, you are just in between fear and your faith. You are standing there. Shall I give in? Shall I give up? Shall I go or shall I not go? Fear has hit your homestead. Fear has hit your body to a point that you look paralyzed. I'm talking to people. What message are you listening tonight? Are you listening to some word of God? Or you are listening to what the witches have said over your life? What are you listening? Which word? Are you enduring the word of fear or the word of faith? I come to it. I'm telling you, I'm here to move some people around from comfort zones to the place where they should. I'm telling you, if you're not taking a leap of faith tonight, I am telling you, you are letting self, yourself down. I'm coming here tonight. This is the word of the Lord is telling me to somebody. I said it's time to leap up and say, ah, I wind, I don't care. I know right where I am. Yes, I'm not feeling okay, but God is in it. He spoke healing already. I know I am hungry. Yes, I know it's Job Ajira. I'm still standing in trust him. Are you still trusting the word of God? What are you trusting? Are you trusting your situation? No, I'm refusing, child of God. You are too precious, but with the blood of Jesus, to be standing to be right a slave of fear. Please come out of fear. The fear of the unknown. It hit the boys, only to find out Jesus walked on the water that they were afraid of. <laughs> hey, let us see. What do we learn tonight? We want to come and see these things here. Right? I want you to point, I want you to listen. These are very much things to learn. Every time I'm not shouting here not to learn anything. What Jesus did was to go on the other side while he goes on the mountain to pray. So that means Jesus had a lifestyle of prayer. No problem. But Jesus was still watching over his disciples. You see? You might say, Pastor, why is he watching from, from the mountain? Because from the mountain, he, uh, the word, the word was with them. What he left with them was the word. And who is the word? It's Jesus. John chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the word. We go to Genesis chapter number 1. In the beginning, God created and the world in the beginning. So when you go into the beginning, so whoever was in the beginning with you is the same who is right there in the middle of where you are. Please, can I get a better amen tonight? I said, if he was in the beginning, if the word was in the beginning, that means your journey was with you in the beginning. Jesus was you in the beginning. He's the one again who can finish the story. Can I get a better amen? I know this situation has not been pleasant enough. I know it's not been pleasant enough. But tonight I've just come to tell some people. I said it's a Friday. Wherever you are participating tonight from, I'm talking to some people who are saying, I'm coming out, Pastor. I'm coming out with my family. I'm coming out with my wife. I'm coming out with my husband. I'm coming out with my children. I'm coming out with my company. Nothing is going to stop me. I am going to be radical for God because he's the God in the middle of the sea. I don't care how much the rock boat, the boat is being rocked up, rocked, rocked, to and fro, rocked to and fro. And then he walked into what? made them afraid. You know, sometimes you look very stupid the minute, two minutes, something that you're afraid is someone is walking on it, you're like, come on every minute. This guy must be crazy. He's walking from something I'm running away from. Because one thing, when you lose your faith, you start to do very bad decisions. When you lose your faith over the word of God, let me tell you, you make the wrong decision. But these guys, 
thank God they kept on there, although they were really having jelly legs. You know what? You know when they come to a point where you have some jelly legs because you can't stand the pressure of life. You are lying. You know, some of us, you know, have you ever noticed I love women normally? You know, they walk with these little towels or little tissues. Pastor, you know, these things, they started going, you know, because they're just afraid, you know, because the makeup is there. They're, you know, they're there, you know, it's okay. But the boys didn't have this, you know, I, I don't know what they had, but life can put you to a place where you are cornered and then you've nowhere to turn to. And the Lord comes in. These guys had nowhere to turn to. Have you ever been to that place? If you've been, but if you've not, please keep living. You'll find out one day and then you come and say, Pastor, I'm cornered. I need a word. And I'm telling you, I'm talking to some people here who are saying, Pastor, thank you very much because I'm coming out. I'm telling you, he has come at the nick of time. He's coming at the nick of time. In the nick of time, he's come to rescue you. He's come to rescue his church out of the sinking. We are in this pandemic where everything looks glim. I'm telling you, you can't look for anything and find nothing. This is where the boat is rocking. I'm telling you, the tides are so high. 2020, 2021, the boat is really in the middle of stuff. But he's saying, I'm coming for you. Just say, he's coming for me. Please, type it. You, that's all you can do with me. That's how you can preach. Just type, he's coming for me. If he's coming for you, just can type it and say, he's coming for me. Let us quickly go and see. Now we know he was watching over his disciples. That's how. Life can put a corner of financial problem, health problem, depression, injured, children in, in different situations. Hallelujah. The wind, hallelujah, the wind to curse God. Do you know if most of the time, this is where we see people cursing God. I've seen people say, I'm sick and tired about church. I've heard every pastor, they are all liars. This one prayed for me until I lost my hair. Nothing came out. This one gave me the whole bottle of oil. I, I did it on my body, the whole bottle of oil. Look, I'm still in the same place. Because the wind can put you to a place where you, you question your own credibility, even your identity. You don't even know who, what your name is. How many times have you seen when life is put you on the corner, you can't bath, you know, not even hairstyle. You can't do nothing. Life can put you to a corner. You can just wake up like some woman coming or some man coming from the graveyard. They say, ah, are they coming from the house? No, life is taking all the toes right where you can't find any style, even dressing. You just wake up. You know one thing? You know, green, yellow, everything is around us. And then we just walk. And people are like, all right, there is another Christmas tree walking. Why? Because life can put us in the corner. But tonight, I'm telling you, he's watching over his word. He's watching over your life. You are too precious for him. And I'm telling you to look back and curse God because of the wind. Wind is seasonal. Can I tell somebody? Winds are seasonal. Can you just preach with me? I said situations are mostly seasonal. It's a season that you are in charge of God. You are not in there permanently. I said it's seasonal. Peter was on the water for too long. But he knew that if I continue holding on, the master will come and definitely he appeared. Let us continue to say. Let me see. Let me see. To guess God, why am I in this situation? Let's see. Jesus did. Listen to this one. Jesus did not stop the wind, but he left them until they were in the middle of the storm. Oh, come on, Jesus. Why are you leaving people to such a state? Let's see what happens. You know, it says here, because he, he left them to come until they were in the middle of the sea because Jesus is the word to overcome the wind. So that's why Jesus was not worried. He couldn't stop the storm while he was there or before they boarded. Because Jesus would have said, okay guys, I cleared the road, so you walk. These guys would have not known who Jesus was. Because they were too good. They were too much, you know what? They were so much, what can I say? These guys did not have true relationship. If you go and start very well, if you see the disciples, they were not really, they were only people who were taken from fishing. And they did not have any closer relation. They didn't even, they were still learning. It's only 14 chapters they are learning who Jesus was. And said, come and be fishers of men. So these people were still smelling fish. Do you know when you are still smelling fish? That means you are still not yet well bathed. You are still from the old things. And they are still hanging around. So this is one thing. These boys were still holding some fish shells around in their lives. So Jesus, they didn't know much about fishing men. 
So the Lord said, come and be fishers. That means they were not yet tended to be real, 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 real. I'm telling you, disciples, they, if I met them today, Peter would have, you know, honestly, I would have laid hands on him to repent and receive Jesus Christ. Because the boy was not, you know, he didn't receive Jesus. He was only called, come here, come here. That's why he was having too many mistakes. Because he was, come here. Because you could do anything in the sea. But let's see, let's see, we'll learn something. It's for another day. It's for another day. But let's go and see here because now what is it that Jesus did not stop the wind, but he led them in the middle because he was the word to overcome the wind. If you have the word, you can overcome your situation. The presence of the word in your life changes your circumstances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of the word of God in your life changes the circumstance. Jesus doesn't change the circumstance. It's the presence of the Lord in your life. The presence of the Lord in your family. That can change the situation. Jesus didn't want to stop the wind. He said, if they've got my word, they can stand the wind. Come on, pastor, preach. Preach, pastor. Preach, pastor. If you've got the word, you can overcome anything. Honestly, if God meant us to run it in the motorway, I don't know what we call them in your country. You know, our freeways here, we call motorways. In America, they call them freeways. Um, you see, they were meant only to cruise. How big your engine, your car is, they're meant for that. If life was like that, then it could have been really boring. But the Lord, he said, no, I'm not here to clear this. I'll give you the tools in you to clear this. <laughs> oh, come on, Lord. I wanted only to sleep. You mean I can't pray off in the night? No, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll let all the witch come in your house. But I give you the power. How? Go pray. Read the word. Hallelujah. Ah, this is the word of God. G gentlemen, and you know what? And women here. Ah, we call them gentlemen. Eh? Women and gentlemen here. Let us talk really business. God is not going to clear some stuff. God has given us the machinery to clear the stuff because he has already spoken the stuff in us. You go to Luke chapter number 10, verse number 19. Power and authority have been given unto us to trample upon snakes and scorpions. Neither shall we drink anything. No wonder why today, whatever we eat, whatever we do, the Lord has already promised us that the power is in you. We are not asking you for more. It's already there. What are you doing, children of God? The word. The word, the word, the word. But let us see. But the word is with you in the wind. And Jesus is the word. Let us learn. I've got pointers as I'm running to finish up my message tonight. Point number one. Jesus has given you the word that you are going to make it. Just say, I'm going to make it. I said, Jesus has given you the word that you're going to make it. Can you declare tonight that I am going to make it? Number two. Faith, because here, faith does not eliminate destruction, but it can shift the attention. Please write that one. It can be good for, for a tweet. I said, faith doesn't eliminate a situation, but it shifts the attention. Ooh. Oh, yes. Because you can have faith for certain things that continue to remain as they are and say I've got faith that this thing is going to go and it remains there but the more longer you stay in faith it might not take that thing but it shifts your situation from that real thing and start to look to the other side because the problem with the disciples they had the faith to stop only the stuff the wind but they did not have the what the faith in the word Please, what came in when they shifted from the word? Fear gripped in. So let me tell you, faith does not eliminate, but it only shifts our attention. Because right now, most of you, are, you know your attention is on your problem. I'm not saying you don't have a problem. I'm not saying we are not going through a problem. But you can't keep talking your problem. You can't keep singing the problem. You can't keep singing anything. Sing the word. Because if they stood up with word, they could not have even gripped in fear. They would just say, guys, let us sing some worship song. Hallelujah. 
They would have just found the worship, you know, a worship song. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior. They could have just gone into some worship. These boys could not think otherwise. Instead of singing songs of victory, they started singing songs of sorrow. Songs of sorrow. You know, it's so sad sometimes. You, you, you know you are in a situation. You can't go and sing depressing. Look at like, my life. You know, you go to this kind of song that tells you how poor or how ugly or how beautiful you are. No, no. Go and say, look at you, Jesus. You are the skvila that oh my love. You are, you are the pillar that oh my love. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that oh my life. If they had even sung that song, they could have just walked and sailed and found that they are on the other side. Find a song during your time. Find a prayer life during your time. I'm telling you, don't sing your problems. Don't sing your situation. They can only add sorrow to our body. And then we become depressed, anxious. Hallelujah. Fear. I'm talking to some men and women of God. I know tonight you are coming out stronger. I've only been sent to your life today. We are coming out stronger as a church. We know we have not met for a long time. I know you can't have no fellowship. You know, it looks like the world is denying us. You can hear there's an Indian variant. And you're like, variant, variant. We, have, we are tired of variants. But what can you do when variants are keeping merging up? What do you do when variants are keeping... Now we've been from the South African. We had the Brazilian. We had the Kent variant. And we had got the Chinese variant. And now we've got five. The fifth one is the Indian. Five. In 14 months and then you're like God please I want to go to work but let me tell you it's coming after you please can you connect tonight It's coming after you I said it's coming he he's so faithful and that's coming after you as I round tonight I want you to see look at this right this is another one here there's nothing that catches God, Jesus by surprise Jesus knew about the storm before before because he is God. He already knew about it. He knows your story. He knows your life. That's why we go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one, verse number five. When you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I'd already started with your ministry. I know you were going to be a pastor. I know you're going to be a wife of a pastor. Only you're going to be an I knew about it. There's nothing catches me by surprise. Yes, you've been in prison. It was past and pastor of the journey to go there. I know you've been in the pub. It was past. Even when you were in the pub, he knew you. He said, Dad, drink for the last time because I need you. I'm telling you right now, wherever you find yourself and say, am I too good enough for this? But let me tell you, he knew you. He had you already at the palm of his hand. So tonight, nothing catches him by surprise. Am I, can I get a better amen tonight? Number five, he says, the word of God doesn't work if you can't trust the word he has spoken in your life. It doesn't work. Every minute when you just doubt yourself, it doesn't work. Forget. Let me tell you, if you only doubt his word, because that's why the book of James says, you know what, don't expect anything if you've got a faith that weavers like the sea that goes to and fro. So tonight, it's happening for you. Jesus wait until the, mid, the middle of the storm. Too far in that, you can't go back. So, and he left us with no option. Yes, you're left with no option. Because he knows Jesus is now the only option. Please go back and say, you are my only option. I looked up to my husband. He couldn't stand up. I looked up to my wife. He couldn't stand up. I looked up for my children. I couldn't stand up. I looked up to the government. I, they could not come in when I needed them. Lord, it's only you. You are only you. Can I have people here who understand what I'm talking about? They say, you're coming where you say, it's only you, God. My ministry is sinking. It's shrinking. I can see things, you know, just deteriorating every day. But I've got, you've got a word. Please go back to your God and retrieve your word. and say, you said, I shall be a herd. Hallelujah. I shall be the herd. Come on. I shall be the herd. I'm not going to be the term. I shall be above, not beneath. Hallelujah. I'm blessed going in. Go and retrieve your word today. Go into your archive where you left your word retrieve your word 
in the name of Jesus. Retrieve your marriage in the name of Jesus. Retrieve your healing in the name of Jesus. Retrieve your joy in the name of Jesus. Retrieve your, your peace in the name of Jesus. Retrieve the peace of God. He have allowed the enemy to take away your peace. When Jesus said, I've got the word for you. Tonight, 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 you stand for a greater purpose. Hallelujah. As long as you are in the presence of the master, with the word you are coming out. I'm talking to real people. I know there are people in the situation here. I know you are there. I know someone is coming later over this podcast. And I know some of you are going to replay again. I'm telling you because something is happening tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let us go. In the name. You need one sermon in your life to change your life. Please. I say you need one sermon. Do you know some of you don't need too many sermons? It's only one word. These guys were taught only one word. You are ignoring the word of God every day. This is the only word you need. You only need one word to change your circumstances today. Say enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Only one word you need tonight. Only one word. You need one word in your life to change your life. With one word, the wind stopped. That's one thing. When he got into this, I love it. I'm not going to see about Brother Peter to walking on the water. When Jesus got in the boat, he didn't want to stop it while he was out. He got in the boat. That means he's coming into your life. He's coming into a situation. When he got in the situation, because he wanted you to see from what Jesus sees from. Because if he has silenced it from the water, he could have said, I would have wanted you to. But Peter failed the test anyway. That's why I said, come in. In the boat, I'll come in a situation that you are running away from. Am I talking sense to somebody tonight? I said, Jesus is coming into your boat. Tonight, he's come into your boat. He's standing into your boat. You are walking everywhere you walk. You don't look like you're the, still the same person. But he's saying, I'm coming now to change the dynamics. I'm come to change the dynamics of your life. Once you allow me in the boat, with one word, he said, shh. The seas, one word. Do you know this could be a word tonight? This could be a word tonight. You don't need too many pastors, honestly. Do you know now? You know, I'm, I'm la always laughing. I said, some of us, our, our, you know, our legs are swollen on Facebook. If Facebook was having legs, some of you could have been in hospital breaking you because from one platform to another, from one man who is sweating on the Facebook, I said, this one looks like the one. Ah, you are there, katara, 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 katara. And the minute with this one finished, you jump to another one again. Katara, katara, the whole night. But you didn't get no word. It's, it's so sad. It's sad. I said, you need one word. It only 20 pastors. He only need one word. He don't need two prophecies. He don't need 100 prophets. He don't need too many oils on your head. Only one word. The situation shifts. Am I talking sense to some people tonight? If you are there, just preach with your pastor. Preach with your pastor. Your healing is in one word. Be thou healed. In the name of Jesus. By his strap we were healed. Isaiah 53, 3 up to 5. First Peter chapter number 2, verse 24. Says, he bore our sins and took our grief. By his stripes we were healed. Healing is in one word. In the name of Jesus. I love that John. Hallelujah. He says, my heart is desire for you guys to be in good health so that you may even prosper. Prosperity is yours. Hallelujah. One word, one word. Hallelujah. You know, Totronom, I love it. He said, up chapter number eight, he says, I've given you power to create wealth. That means one word was given. We don't need too much. Only one word. How many words are you ignoring tonight? You are ignoring the simplest word you are given in instruction to say go. And you ignore. Let's go. Okay, let's see. Number eight. What do you trust? Do you trust the word or do you trust the wind? I'm closing up. Are you trusting the word or are you trusting the wind? Because one has to go to win. One of it should win. One or the other. Said, are you trusting the wind or are you trusting the word are you trusting your situation or the word of god please tonight it's a decision night what are you trusting are you are you 
fear is it going to stay with you forever or faith to come out please am i talking to somebody tonight i said are you in fear side or i on faith side these are only things we have there's the word there's the wind hallelujah there's faith and there's fear what what are you trusting what are you standing upon it's time in decision time in the name of jesus do you have fear or do you have faith because by faith we know the story in the name of jesus they overcame by faith in the word that came through what are you speaking roman you know what i love is, is, is you know what revelation chapter 12 verse number 11 and 12 he says they overcame by the word word words speak words speak words proverbs chapter 18 21 life and death lies in the power of the tongue those who speak what they speak they will eat the fruits what are you speaking you are in part of what you're speaking what are you speaking tonight child of god men and women of god what are we speaking please we want to come out tonight in the name of jesus you've been on the helm of the mountain for too long time to go up the top and have the fresh air in the name of jesus last but not least do you trust your feelings or the presence of god wow these are only this is my last words feelings I don't feel like it today, Pastor. I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling that. Do you know we are really people who are driven by feelings? But when we are driven by the presence of God, you remember in the book of, you know, the book of Exodus chapter number 33, you remember when, when, when Moses was going to, about to leave the tent, he said, no, Moses said, I'm not going there without your presence. Presence. I, because feelings were telling him something. But he said, no. I might have the feeling, but I'm not going to entertain feelings. So much of us have entertained feelings, feelings, feelings. Please, it's time right now to bring the presence of God. Can you raise up your hands right now? I'm going to pray for some people tonight. I'm going to pray for you that your wings be shushed tonight. Hallelujah. The wings be shushed. Your faith be raised to another level. In the mighty name of Jesus, go back to the word that was given into your life. That you are beautiful. That you are going to be married. That you are going to marry. That you are going to have your children. That you are going to have what God has predestined you. Let us go tonight. I want to pray for somebody. That healing belongs to you. Children of God, I can't avoid this kind of messages because we are in a real world. I want to see my people who are right here on this place as Jesus Christ is coming back. We want to see ourselves on the other side. Hallelujah, beside the storms, regardless of the storm tonight, can you raise up your hands, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I am coming right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm coming right now, right now to remind your church today that you have spoken your word over the church. You have spoken your word over your children. You have spoken the word over our body. And healing, peace, depression. You have spoken the word of peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Every anxiety, every spirit of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. Every generational stuff that follows us any cases that was given upon our family that was spoken upon our family i bind and destroy it tonight in the name of jesus let your word come and turn the situation let it come and turn the tides in the name of jesus in the name of jesus tonight i'm praying in the name of jesus i said be healed be set free right now. Just accept it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's time right now and say, Lord, come into my situation. Come into my life right now. Bring that weight alive right now. And know you had gone backslided. You have backslided that you are coming back again. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Come back again to your faith. Come back again to your word. In the name of Jesus. Come back to your word. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is well tonight. I thank God. Lord, you have done it tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, as I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Some of you are going to call me. 
because testimonies are coming every day. Let me, every time I'm here, I'm receiving testimony. Phone calls are coming all over because there are people who are connected here and say, Pastor John, we are going to stand even in the storm. We are still with you because you have got the word that's going to see us the other side. You've got the word that doesn't even compromise and adulterated. It's unmixed word. It's only as what it is. You get what you see. That's what it is right here because God is coming to the rescue you right now because that word is coming alive in your family. Tonight, if you are there, shout hallelujah, Lord. My time is now. Now, now my time is now. God bless you, children of God. I am here. You have been part of this breakthrough. You have been part of this delivery. You have been part of this rescue. You have been rescued tonight. You don't know what has happened tonight. Just go to bed with faith and know that God is able. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you all. And God richly touch you wherever you are at. You know what? Whatever the storm is, is temporal. I said, whatever I repeat, whatever the storm is, is temporal. Because it's coming at the right time to take you out. God bless you, children of God. In Jesus' mighty name, let me share grace with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit live and abide with us now and forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall fall us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.